So in this video, we're going to talk about manometers. Now, similar to barometers, which basically measure atmospheric pressure by how far the atmosphere pushes mercury up a glass tube, um, manometers measure pressure based on the movement of mercury within a tube as well. When we're looking at manometers, there's two main types. There's ones that are open-ended, which are exposed to atmospheric pressure, and we have closed-ended manometers, which have a vacuum at the other end. So what we can do is look at a gaseous system where we have a reaction that might be generating a gas or consuming a gas or whatever, but results in some change. And we can basically compare the level of the mercury on each side. Now, point I want to make real quick, the reason we use mercury for something like this is it's a liquid that is very dense. It's about over 13 times as dense as water, and it also isn't going to evaporate or start boiling under low pressure conditions. So we can use it for experiments like these. So if we're looking at this first manometer, you have atmospheric pressure pushing down on it from outside. What if the levels are equal, like I have right here, this tells us that the pressure being exerted from inside is equivalent to that. Otherwise, mercury would move one way up the tube. So we could say that inside this, if we're assuming the atmospheric pressure is 760, that inside this container, we have 760 millimeters mercury worth of pressure, which is the equivalent of one atmosphere or 14.7 PSI or 101.32 kilopascals. Looking at the next one, if we have that same atmospheric pressure of 760 pushing down on the outside, and then we look inside the uh, container, we can see that it is, this is pushing harder on it, therefore the mercury gets pushed up the other end of the tube. And you can measure the difference in pressure by the difference in height for this manometer tube. So if there's 200 millimeters of mercury of displacement, we can also say that there's 200 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure greater in here than what is outside. So we could say that the pressure inside of here is 960 millimeters of mercury. All right. Now, if the, if the uh, mercury shifted the other way, we would have a lower pressure than what is outside. But either way, we look at the difference between the levels to determine the difference in pressure being applied to each side. Now, with a closed-ended a closed -ended manometer, you have a vacuum in one end, which is all the air is pumped out of the tube before the mercury is inserted. And so you have no pressure on this side, so zero millimeters of mercury. On this side, since this is even, side here is equivalent. So this is a completely evacuated tube with just mercury, so there would be no pressure in here as well. However, if you have some reaction that generates a gas inside of here, happen, and then it pushes the mercury 550 millimeters up the tube, therefore you could say that based on the difference in height, that's the pressure that's in here. So we could say that this container right here now has 550 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure. So essentially what we're looking at is the gravitational force of mercury that's being overcome, and that's going to be equivalent to the excess pressure exerted on the other side or going the other way. 